When creating a PowerPoint presentation, keeping the slides visually consistent is important. It makes understanding and absorbing the content easier. One of the key techniques to do this is knowing how to work with the slide master. This is the underlying element which tells all the slides in the show what to look like as far as background graphics, font choices, and so on. Getting to the slide master is pretty easy. We simply go up to the View tab in the ribbon, give a click, and find the Master Views group sitting over here toward the left. And in that group, we can click on Slide Master. The next step is to look at the left side of the view. It's not the slideshow. There are the various default slide layouts, such as Title Slide, Title and Content, and the others. These are all the regular arrangements of information and material on our slides. But at the top of the list, if we scroll up, we run across what looks like a bigger slide. This here is the actual slide master. Its function is to control the appearance of all the elements common to all the layouts. It's even possible to have more than one of these slide masters, but the point is that making changes here keeps the rest of the slides visually alike, and that's more professional looking. Now, having clicked on the slide master, we can select and edit any element over here in the main view and watch the subsidiary layouts at the bottom left change along with the master. For example, I can drag to select the title and content boxes, and I can go up to the home tab in the ribbon and click the drop down for the choice of font. I could use Arial, I could try Abadi or I could go with Times New Roman, really whichever we like. And if we glance over at the other slide layouts, we can see they're doing it too. What we change in the Slide Master affects the other layouts. If we wanted to add a background graphic, we merely need to have it ready. And we can go over here to the Slide Master tab, give it a click, and then slide over to the background group in the middle and click on Background Styles. If we don't want to use one of the regular color choices up here, we can click on Format Background at the bottom of the list, and then go over to the Task Pane or Window Pane that shows up on the right. We would then click the choice here for Picture or Texture Fill, and a little bit down from that, we can click the button to Insert from an outside picture source. And as you can see here, all I have to do is make my choices to where from, so from file, and then just navigate, say, to my desktop and find whatever graphic I want to use, give it a double click, and here it is. If I feel like it, I can slide back over here and uh, adjust the transparency or do any one of several other kinds of things, like adjusting the offset. But the main point is that if I want to use a graphic of my own, it's no problem. I could also go up here, just to the left of the background, and grab one of the themes from the Edit Theme group here. I can pick whichever happens to appeal to me. Uh, if there's no particular appearance we need to go to for product branding or other standards, we can try out whichever ones we like. We can see that it's pretty straightforward. And whatever we do to the master will normally affect all the subsidiary layouts. Whichever way we go, the point is that we can very easily keep all the layouts consistent. And keeping the consistency of color scheme, fonts, and so on is the most important part. Once we finish, we can click the button to close the master view up here, and close our format background as well. And now we see that all the slides that use the master that we edited have been affected equally. We then save, and we've improved the appearance of the entire show with just a little bit of work.